Hi, today we're going to explore how to look after your mental health and well-being as a new parent. Having a baby is exciting, but it can be challenging too, as you're experiencing a huge amount of change in your lives. And no matter how much you're looking forward to this new life as a family, it can take time to adapt to the sleep deprivation, the new routines, and the lack of time that you have for yourself and your partner. Many women will experience some form of the baby blues after giving birth. It's caused by a massive change in your hormones, fatigue from birth and a lack of sleep with a new baby in the house, plus the pressure of looking after this little bundle of joy. As I said earlier, change isn't without its challenges. Usually the symptoms start a couple of days after birth and should only last for a few days. These include feeling emotional, crying for no reason, feeling anxious or tense, feeling irritable and touchy. There are some physical symptoms that you may experience too, including hot flushes, night sweats and vaginal dryness. The key thing is to recognise it as completely normal, to chat with your partner, friends and family about how you're feeling. Try to rest as much as possible and don't put too much pressure on yourself in the early days with lots of visitors, unless they're happy to help around the house, of course. One in four mums and one in 10 dads can experience mental health problems after the birth of a baby. The fact that men suffer too shows it's not simply a hormonal problem. In fact, some common causes of postnatal mental health issues include a major life event, such as having a baby, moving house or the breakdown of a relationship, a lack of support, whether that's from your partner or a wider network of family and friends, stressful living conditions, including financial problems or work difficulties, and a prior mental health history or a family history of mental health illness. If you are experiencing postnatal mental health issues, it's more likely your partner will too, as they juggle looking after you and the baby on top of their usual responsibilities. I appreciate that this is a really difficult topic to discuss, but it's so important that we speak about it more openly to help build awareness, encouraging you to recognise the possible risk factors so that if any resonate with you, you can seek help early and build strategies to mitigate them. But also, you can recognise the symptoms and find help quickly should you need it. Some of the most common mental health illnesses are postnatal depression, generalised anxiety disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Some common symptoms to be aware of include feelings of hopelessness, a lack of interest in looking after yourself, the house or your baby, feeling sad or tearful for no reason, extreme feelings of anxiety for a range of otherwise normal situations, feeling too worried to leave the house and not wanting to engage with your friends and family, whether that's over the phone or meeting up in person, obsessive thoughts that you, you may harm yourself or your baby, and finding it difficult to bond with your baby. Finally, feelings of exhaustion, but also being unable to sleep. A more severe postnatal mental health illness is postpartum psychosis, where you may experience hallucinations or hear voices and have manic periods of feeling like you can achieve anything, known as the baby pinks, and then depressive periods where you may have suicidal thoughts. The key thing, if you're experiencing any of these feelings or symptoms, is to talk about them. And that goes for the men too, whether that's talking with your friends and family in the first instance, or seeking professional help from your midwife, health visitor, or a GP. The sooner you ask for help, the quicker your journey to feeling better begins. There are two key types of help available. Firstly, psychological help, which includes talking therapies such as cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT. It also includes self-help strategies and engaging with local support groups and charities offering peer support. The second is medication. 
The health professionals will work with you to find a plan that best suits your needs and one that you consent to. The key thing is they want you to feel better as quickly as possible, so it limits the impact on you, your baby and family life. Let's take a quick look at some of the tools that you can use to support your mental health as a new parent. Build your support network. Whether that's going to antenatal classes in pregnancy or local baby groups after your baby is born, a local support network of people experiencing similar things to you is invaluable. Try not to be a super parent. Ask for the help you need and take the help that's offered. Don't worry about trying to be the picture-perfect parent. Simply focus on your baby and get into grips with your new routine. Batch cook in pregnancy and fill up your freezer. I know I said it in our first session, but this is so important as you need to sustain your energy levels with healthy, tasty meals. And with a newborn in tow, you're unlikely to find the time or inclination to cook proper meals. Look after yourself. Get out for exercise every day. A walk with your baby is enough. Fresh air and physical activity are known to boost mood and can help you build up your melatonin levels, which help you and your baby sleep at night. You'll hear everyone say, sleep when your baby sleeps. And this is really good advice for the early months with a newborn, when you're up multiple times through the night feeding them. Sleep is key for good mental health and well-being. If you find relaxing difficult, You'd use guided relaxations. There are lots of apps out there that offer such support, including Insight Timer, Headspace, and Calm, to name a few. Finally, find a little bit of time in your day for yourself and a little bit of time in your day for your partner. In the early days, this could only be a few minutes. As you start to get a handle on your new routines, you can slowly build this up. Many of us may never have really sat down and thought about our mental health and well-being, so it can be hard to figure out where to start. If that's you, don't worry, there's a really great tool which you can use and is also free. You can download it from newlifeclasses.com forward slash bounty. It's called the Pregnancy and Post-Birth Wellbeing Plan and it's been designed by Tommy's and is endorsed by NICE. It's a two-page document that helps you work out how to start thinking about your emotions that, and the type of support that you might need in pregnancy and after the birth of your baby. It also gets you to explore who the best people in your network are to turn to if you need help and how best to approach them if it doesn't come naturally to you. What professional support is available in your local area and again, how to access it and coping strategies that appeal to you as an individual. I would advise getting your partner to complete their own wellbeing plan too. Then discussing each of your plans together so that you know and understand how to support each other should any issues arise. It's important to recognise and respect that you may have different approaches. Communication is key. It can be hard at times but using tools such as the Tommy's Wellbeing Plan can help kickstart some of these more difficult conversations. My final piece of advice to you is be kind to yourself. Try not to put too much pressure on yourself or your new family. Give yourselves time to adapt to family life and take all the help you can get. It is not a sign of weakness. In our next and final session, we'll be discussing newborn health and wellbeing. I look forward to seeing you then.